So I am originally from Portugal, tiny Spain, as I like to call it. Um, and I, I didn't really go to college. I started being a full stack front end engineer and I started with WordPress back in, I don't know, like, I don't know, like 10 years ago or something. And from then I just started growing into the front end, started learning more and more JavaScript, more started learning React. And, um, you know, here we are. And now I do some Node as well. And last company, I also learned some Rust. Yeah. First of all, create components. And I feel like that's just a good React idea in general. Like create components, create instances of your objects instead of making the same object over and over again. Because like that will increase a lot the number of uh, vertices on your page on your page. Okay, so basically a vertice is think of a square. A square has four vertices. So everything on the web and on 3D works with triangles for some godforsaken reasons. <laughs> so yes. So like a square will have two triangles and like the more number of triangles that you have that it has to render and compute, the harder it will be. So you can instance these things. You can also instance them in Blender if you're just doing 3D um, and create components. Like that is very important. Also, another thing that I think is very important is that you can actually minify these things. So like if you get a GLTF or a GLB, which are the most two used uh, formats for using 3D on the web, you can minify them and make them way smaller so that they're not so big on the user's machine. And also a lot of these things try to create, if you have like, let's say five different models and the only difference between them is the material they have, make the materials on the website instead of making them in Blender, just exporting different types. Like try to keep how much you're actually sending down the wire to a minimum and create components. That's very important. <laughs> Okay, so let's say that you made a model in Blender, a little Pikachu or whatever. You can export this model from Blender or from a lot of other ones, but we'll just talk about Blender because it's free and open source and that's the one that most of us use as hobbyists. You export it from Blender and you can export as a GLB or GLTF in that sense to use on the web. And those are really easy to implement into a web browser because you have things like React 3 Fiber that actually allow you to transform a GL, GLTF file into a React component so that you can actually change what's inside of it. So like you can think of this as in like, so instead of having a div, you have a cylinder and you can change the radius of the cylinder. You can change this, the, you can put another cylinder inside the cylinder and just make it everything very cursed. And it's also, I actually think it's very, it's not, it's not easy because all of programming is hard, but it's simple to change materials on your, Textures like this has gotten way, way simpler in, in, in like recent times where you can actually change the materials and make it look like something completely different. Um, and you can edit this on the front end, like you can make an editor for material. So uh, assuming you're using a GLB or GLTF format and you're using React 3 Fiber, like there's a website that will basically uh, turn it from GLTF to a React component. If you're using this, you can literally do whatever you want because all of it is just going to be little divs and groups and things like that. To learn 3D, it depends on how you want to go about it. So if you want to learn 3D with, with Blender as well, just go on YouTube and search for the Blender Donut guy. And there's this guy is from Australia. I think I never remember his name that he makes this YouTube tutorial about like making the a donut in Blender, but it like, it goes through everything. It's like eight hours of a goddamn donut. And it's like, it will get you through most things that you want to learn in Blender, which is very, very nice. <clears throat> if you have some extra income, I would also recommend the 3JS journey by, okay, no, I actually, I actually care about his name this time. This, this was, this is a really good <laughs> thing. <laughs> so I'm going to Google his name really fast. Uh, da -da. Where's, what's the name of the, it doesn't say, do you not, do you not, do you not have your name in here? It doesn't. Okay. Bruno, Bruno, Bruno Simon. So Bruno Simon made this course about 3JS and using it on the web and it's very detailed and he goes in through it very slowly. And it's a really good course. If you have some extra income, I would definitely recommend that. Or if you can charge it to your company, if you don't actually want to learn Blender, look through the React 3 Fiber documentation, honestly. 
download models from like Sketchfab or something. So if you go to the React 3, 3 Fiber documentation, there's a section on the examples. And from the examples, you can get a lot of things because they, all the examples are hosted on like Code Sandbox. So you can look at the code, copy stuff over, do, do things like that. And go to, so I think the best websites for getting models that are free to use are both Sketchfab, uh, which does require attribution, and BlendSwap. So BlendSwap gives you Blender files that you can just download and do whatever you want. And a lot of them are actually CC0. And there's also this guy called Kenny, just Google Kenny and NL as in Netherlands. And he makes free open source CC0, no credit, no credit attributed game assets that you can use on everything. So if that's how you want to go about it, I would just literally skip pretty much everything. Do learn some 3JS just to get the basics of it and why it's painful, and then just jump to React 3 Fiber and look at the documentation and stuff like that. Yeah. What is my largest I, what is my largest passion as a developer? I like fixing things. It appeases my brain. Like I have ADHD. And so the idea of just fixing things really just brings me joy. And also like, I think like a lot of the reason I started working for Arama, which is a search company, I genuinely love data because it puts the world into a JSON file basically. And I can look through it and be like, okay, this makes sense to my head now. Because I feel like all of my life I had to like adjust to how the world thinks, even though that's not the way I think. And I had to like adjust my brain. And I feel like data helps me. Like right now, for example, I am scraping the Steam API and I don't even know why. I just need this data in my life. So now I'm like a gigabyte of a JSON file. So I think like fixing problems and giving actual like um, visual identifications to data like allowing you to see what data actually means are the two things that like are really important for me when it comes to development. My passions, you may call it. Basically, I'm trying to fix my brain to code. <laughs> I envision the future web development with tools like Copilot helping, for example, but I do not envision AI taking over. I don't think that, and I may just be old and like want to like, you know, not have my demise, but I don't imagine that in the next 10 years, like we're going to have like AI just taking over your job or something as an engineer. Like, I don't think AI is that good yet. It may be in the future, but like, Hopefully when I'm retired. Um, but yeah, like I see it, I see, I see development in general as becoming more and more inclusive as well. Like, I feel like there's been a big push and a big difference when it comes to like, who actually is an engineer nowadays. Like there's less of like, you know, only dudes get to do be engineers. So I feel like there's going to be, I feel like products are only going to get better in those senses because more and more people can become engineers it's easier and it's i don't mean that it's easier as in like being an engineer is easy i mean it's easier as in like you don't need to go to, to college or you don't need like a buckload of money or something like that like it's something that you can do which is also true for like video games and that's why we've had an explosion of like indie video games of like two people making a video game and we've had very different video games come out because different voices started doing the thing because they don't need like a lot of money anymore so i think apps and websites and the internet in general is going to get better on the fringe side of it as in like you know like the idea of indie video games i think is going to start happening more and more to the internet which is good um when it comes to like the actual implications in terms of code. I think serverless probably is the future and that's fair. Um, like I don't, I think there's some time we're going to get something that will replace react. I don't think that time is now. I don't think that time is in two years. Even I think it happens when it happens. And I think even when it happens, we will replace react, but we won't really replace JSX because JSX is just 10 out of 10. No one is really complaining about JSX. I think so. I think on the human side of things, I think things will become more open for everyone. I think on the tech side of things, I don't think AI is going to take over. I think things will become, I hope things will become easier because I've seen a gradual increase of the difficulty to get started. 
Um, and I hope things like kind of slide down. And uh, I think types in JavaScript are going to be a thing, which I'm fine with. This is not a complaint. But I definitely think that at this point, it doesn't make sense to have JavaScript and TypeScript. It might as well be JavaScript. And in that case, you choose to use types or not instead of the weird divide we have right now that doesn't just doesn't make any sense.